everybody. Happy Thursday, happy beautiful spring day, at least here at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. I'm Kathy, I'm the founder of Catskill Animal Sanctuary, and this is a throwback Thursday with this little girl named Cricket. Now Cricket, though she's been here less than 10 years, her story begins the year we opened because her story starts with Rambo's story. And Rambo, for those of you who've been with us for a while, um, you'll remember was uh, one of 17 animals. He was a magnificent sheep with extraordinary horns um, that were deadly in the beginning because he was not trusting of us, uh, was rescued. They were rescued the year we opened from a hoarder who'd been hoarding animals for decades. She had a long arrest record um, and I got a phone call from her one day. I'd never heard of her. And she said, hi, my name is Camille. She's since passed away. My name is Camille. Will you help me with my animals? And I asked her what she meant. Well, C Camille would get in trouble in a local community and then move around from place to place with her animals. She had um, uh, those big, white, woolly, furry dogs. What are they called? What is that breed called? Newfoundlands. She had Newfoundlands. She had hundreds of cats. She had reptiles. She had farm animals. At the time, she didn't have horses. And so we went over to figure out what this was all about. And sure enough, 17 animals were locked in one stall, about 12 by 12 feet. And the 18th animal was dead. The 18th animal was a decomposing mother of a young calf who was there. So we went to the New York State Humane Association and Camille was arrested and charged with animal cruelty. Her animals were seized and ultimately because she couldn't pay for the cost of caring for them, of course, she was forced to surrender them. Rambo came here and I won't tell his story because this is Cricket's time, but Rambo was the most extraordinary animal I've ever met who taught me more than I ever imagined I could learn from an animal. I was... Oh, Kathy, just real quick. It is a little bit windy, so if you just want to speak up a little oh, bit. Oh, gosh. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Rambo looked to me as his leader, and he was the protector of his flock, and over time, his flock came to include all beings who lived or worked at Catskill Animal Sanctuary, and he changed my life, and he's the reason we have our underfoot family, our free rangers whom you've met. So fast forward a decade, and I would periodically drive past this woman's house because she hoarded compulsively. Compulsively, hoarding is a, is a disease, it's a mental illness. And um, these people typically don't care well for themselves, much less any other living being. And one of these days, one of the days I, I drove past her um, ramshackle shack, with tarps on the roof and a falling down porch. And this animal was chained to a tree. And I'm gonna groom her in a minute. You can't really see this because she has dried mud on her lower legs because her, um, her, uh, her, the hooves, it's covered. The mud is covering this injury. But she was chained to a tree with a heavy chain link fence. I mean a chain link and this if I clear off this mud, if I clear off this mud, there's a scar that wraps around the entire circumference of her leg from where that heavy chain, chain link was. Um, she had a bullseye spray painted on her rump. She had no access to shelter. She had no access to water. And literally this um, fragile woman would take her a little bit of water whenever she felt like it. And every time I would go by, she would consume gallon after gallon of water. Well, it took a year and a half to wrangle uh, Cricket from this woman. Um, the, she, the, the SPCA eventually um, somehow negotiated the release 
of Cricket. Now, the entire community had been working to get her released because people were up in arms, this horse tied to a tree by a chain link fence with no access to shelter, water, or food. So uh, she came here eventually, and I will never forget the moment we turned her out in the field and this animal who lived her life at the end of the chain for at least two years galloped from one end of her pasture to the other. And we actually caught a moment on film when her hand, you've seen it, you've seen that photo, uh, um, where she, whoops, hang on. <laughs> See, she's, she's still got places she wants to go, yeah. right? Um, which, where you, the beautiful photo when all four of her legs are off the ground in sheer joy, freedom for the first time in two or more years. And she, uh, when she came here, she was not aggressive, but she was an in your face, very assertive animal. Why? Because she had to survive out there in the woods by Minnewaska State Park if your local traps road, if you've been there, was where she was. Um, and uh, she was a tough cookie. She would stride right up and just stand her ground and say, what are you doing in my field? Well, over time she realized she didn't need to do that anymore and she became such a soft and soulful animal. She's just a beauty. She is, her coloring, she's called a paint. Um, she has blue eyes. She is, I'm gonna say she is 13.2, 13.2 hands. The way you measure a, a horse um, is in four inch units. Each unit is called a hand. So I'm guessing if I'm 5'6", she's about 13.2 hands. So technically she's a pony. Ponies are considered anybody under 14.2 hands. Um, she's got some health challenges. She's got some respiratory stuff. She struggles in the summer, in the heat. We have to keep her in a lot during the summer, turn her out late when it cools off. Where are you going, Crick? <laughs> um, she's got some arthritis, some, some ring bone. Um, but she is a lovely, lovely animal. And it was such a joy to be able to take first Rambo's group over the years, many, many, many ducks and chickens, and then finally a, a horse from this notorious local hoarder who passed away uh, many years ago, several years ago. So that is her story. And right now, she's shedding a little bit as all our, our, most of our animals are, not the birds, of course, but the goats, uh, the horses, the cows, the sheep coming up behind us will be scheduled to be shorn soon uh, because they don't shed unless they are hair sheep, they don't shed sufficiently. And they would literally have heat stroke if we didn't shear them. And if they were pausing, yeah. Oh, we have a question. Okay. Um, and sort of as a follow-up question to it, uh, how old is Cricket and what year was it that she came here? You know, she's been here a while, hasn't she? I, I am so bad with time and I apologize. I should have let, looked it up and didn't. Um, I'm gonna guess it was, I'm gonna throw out a number and say eight years ago and she was 11 when she came here. So she's closing in on 20 years old. She's becoming, she's certainly a mature animal. We don't call, we don't call 20 year olds old anymore because we've learned, we being caretakers have at lots of places, not just here, have learned how to provide well for geriatric animals. So we have plenty of horses who survive well into their 30s. So um, she's about my age. She, we're, 
around, she's around about 60 in human years. Um, so we so still pretty young. Still pretty, just look at me. Isn't that right, <laughs> girlfriend? See, she should have some good, some good time left. We're just, it's the lung thing. It's the respiratory stuff that's the most concerning. Look at all that good grass. These are... Ooh, oh, Kathy, this... Kathy, we checked the numbers. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, oh. it was 2012, so like nine years ago. Oh, so you okay. were close. Okay. And we, our records say she was born in 98. So right. that'd make her 23. No! She was older than 11? I would have sworn she was 11. So wait, she came here when? Uh, 2012. 2012. And she, wow, so she was 14 when she came here. Oh, I guess she's old now. That's we add a, those numbers on, is she old now? No. <laughs> but here's the, th here's, here's the thing. It's, you age horses by looking at their teeth. It's an, it's an art and a science. It's difficult to do. I'm good at looking at teeth and saying very young, young, middle-aged, old, ancient. I cannot say this one is five and that one is eight. So a lot of times when we, some vets can, some vets are quite good, not all, some vets are quite good at aging horses, but when we take in animals from hoarders, we are sort of taking the hoarder's word, if they even provide the information, that that's how old the animal is. So sometimes our estimates are truly approximations. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, so, we have a visitor, by the way. I'm gonna just pan over. Oh, Who's that? Oh, no, over Fer. here. It's Ferguson. Hello, darling. Why is oh, no one paying attention old, to Ferguson? Here comes the old man. Hello, oh, and Christopher's Christopher. coming too. Hello, Hello handsome. So, um. <laughs> Horses are, despite their size, some of the most fragile animals at sanctuaries. It is, they have digestive, lots of digestive challenges, and it's very easy for them to colic. And unlike in babies, in horses, colic can very quickly go from mild to deadly. And the challenge is that each di very different things bring it on, very different things bring it on. And vets will say, if you ask them the question, vets will often say, what brings it on is change. Some animals are more colic prone than others. So change in diet, change in the sugar content in grass, change in a neighbor who lives in the stall, stall next to you, change in routine, change in uh, location. So. Uh, we've had horses who were extremely colic prone, horses who, whose guts are much less fragile. She doesn't have much of a challenge in that area. Hers are, again, respiratory. Are you going to let me, uh, I got to be a little bit careful because I have a very jammed finger, so I got to be a little careful not to get it wrapped around this lead rope. Um, Four-legged animals four joints in the back as opposed to three. We have hip, knee, ankle. They have the hip, the stifle, just like dogs and cats, the fourth joint. The hock, the hock, which in the front is called the knee, and the fetlock. Because Kathy, you grew up around horses, right? I did. I did. I grew up Oh, there's Ferguson's back. And in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna write an op-ed next week um, that includes a little bit about my history. I had the amazing privilege of growing up on a racehorse farm, and the problems with the industry aside, if you're a kid growing up on a farm with 200 horses. That's quite the life in a small river that runs through the property. You know, we played in the horse fields and in the barn lofts and uh, sat in the, in the river and watched the little fish pick at our freckles. Um, it was an extraordinary life. I, I have come to realize as an adult that horse racing is a brutal 
industry, even though through a child's eyes, I couldn't see that at all on my dad's farm. Those horses gleamed and they um, got a day off in their big pasture. I didn't question that they were broken, as in trained, as in a saddle put on their back, when they were less than two years old, when their bones were still maturing. And I didn't know that the slaughterhouse is where most of them wind up. And I didn't know that so many of them break bones during racing, often because they're drugged. They're drugged to mask, to mask pain. So I can, I live in this duality of being simultaneously incredibly proud of my working class father and what he accomplished in his lifetime and the life that it afforded my brother and sister and me, but sim simultaneously um, very clear about the barbarousness, barbarity, what's the noun? Barbarism. Barbarism there you go. of the who's horse racing. The, who's the former English teacher the, here, I Kathy? know, I know. How embarrassing um, of, of that industry. Are you going to poop? No, you, oh, pew, cricket. I think she farted. <laughs> she farted. Oh, Whoa, no. Wait. Oh, folks, too bad we can't get that through the camera. <laughs> She's just like, what are you guys doing? It's fine. <laughs> yep, and she's just dragging you around, huh? She is. Finding that good grass to eat. Yeah. Cricket is the, um, the pasture mate to Buddy, whom many of you know. Buddy is our third blind horse named Buddy. The middle one, interestingly, had this condition which bizarrely made him intermittently blind. Um, the other two permanently blind, um, but she's the pasture mate of Buddy who called and called for her and is going to look forward to when she goes back in a minute. <laughs> you got to be careful when you groom the joints for obvious reasons, same reason you don't scrub your own joints as hard as you would the other parts of your body. There's just not a lot, enough flesh there to protect them. Look at your delicate eye. She has the tiniest little feet and the tiniest, I love you. I She's love a dainty you. lady. Tiniest little, most delicate ears. She has to wear a fly mask from dawn to dusk in the, um, in the summer, not only to protect the flies, but also because as a blue-eyed horse um, and a, a very pale horse, she's easily inclined to sunburn and because the sun actually the bright sunlight bothers her so she will soon be when you come for a visit you'll see her beneath a, a mesh fly fly mask that she can see through but that's protective um in a number of ways it's kind of like horse sunglasses kind of yeah. like horse sunglasses yes we regular are. like sunglasses like we wear that wouldn't that wouldn't, wouldn't work wouldn't too well, would it? <laughs> wouldn't do the trick. No, and folks, if you have questions or things you want to share with Kathy, do feel free to, to pop them in the chat. It is really just a beautiful day. Oh, it's to be glorious. hanging out here. You know, um, we have our willow trees in the background starting to flower and leaf out, which is lovely because uh, if you've been here before when there's leaves on those willow trees, you know that the goats go wild for those. <laughs> and also the sheep, but a little less so. Um, but oh man, those goats love them. Now, let me, I'll share a little example about colic. Oh, if a horse were prone, when the grass starts to come in in the spring, it, ha it has the highest sugar content. So if you had a horse that were prone to, extremely prone to colic, you wouldn't even take him from a barren pasture to graze in an area like this where grass is just beginning to come through uh, for even this long. That's how sensitive the most colic prone horses can be. And you don't know, 
you know, we, we luckily don't have too many colic prone horses. Uh, we have had them in the past. The blind horse buddy would colic if you blinked too many times. It was just horrid and we eventually lost him one time to colic, eventually lost him to colic because of the time at which he colicked. He colicked after everybody had gone home for the day. And when I came down to the barn around 10 o'clock that night to check him, he was too far gone. It was just, it was not the way we would have chosen for that sweet old boy to go. But man, did he have a good life while he was with us. Oh, she's going to look fantastic when you're done with her there. She needs actually a little bit. So hard to get all the dirt. From, whoops, sorry guys. Oh, stop. All the dirt from a white horse. <laughs> they really need every now and then a good bath. Not quite that time of year yet. Um, and besides, let me guess, when she has a bath, is the first thing she does go and roll Shake around in the dirt. Oh, yeah, of classic. <laughs> you groom a horse, they go down and roll. They groom a horse, you groom a horse, they go down and roll. Like, what really is the point? What really, really is the point? Let me get this leg. I'm right here. I'm right here. Good girl. Good. Yes, I'm good girl. Kathy, what does she think of baths? Does she like baths? She or? likes them. She likes them? She likes them. Oh, good. Uh, she actually, some animals, Tucker the cow included, love to be sprayed right here on the forehead. And uh, she is one of the ones who loves bass and um, will hopefully get her share if it's a hot summer. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be really nice on a hot day. Yeah. <laughs> pigs, the pigs love to, to play in the water. Um, yeah, they're individual. as as we all of us always say and as you know from having your own animals they're very individual as to their likes and dislikes uh -uh. i gotta get your face i gotta get your face your face did i need a little squab did i need a little squab yes i do yes i do but i'm eating <laughs> but i'm don't you I see all this gorgeous priority. grass i mean Oh, so nice to see everything green. Oh my goodness, yes. Just a few more weeks and the world will look very different around here. <laughs> and folks, if you wanted to come see how it looks around here, we are doing member tours right now. So you can sign up for that on our website um, if you're a member already, or you can also become a member and then sign up for it too. Uh, and we'll put the links to those in the chat. Um, it's been really fantastic being able to welcome people here to the sanctuary again after, you know, for the majority oh of last goodness. year, we couldn't, yeah. it's, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> and you have been busy. We Ms. have been, we Ms. have been Ms. super Lauren. busy. Yeah, that's great. And we will, uh, I don't know if we're, uh, are announcing the date yet. Are we announcing our open for public tours yet? Oh, date? I don't know. That one might be a mystery still. It's, it's, we it's are. Happen. It's happening. We'll just tell you it's happening very soon that we will swing open that gate and welcome anybody who wants to come down and meet these delightful animals. And as long as you stories. sign up for it first. But folks if you are on our social media which clearly you found us somewhere um or you're on our mailing list which we can also drop a link to that in the chat uh you can sign up for those and you will know um all of the latest happenings around the sanctuary and kathy we did have a question for you let okay. me just scroll back to it about um well i mean it's about the horses though i guess you're welcome to answer too are the horses happier in the winter or the summer? And is Kathy happier in the winter or the summer? Kathy is happier in the summer. 
<laughs> that didn't even think about Kathy that one. endures the winter like so many people. Those short days and needing to put on 18 layers before you go outside. Definitely prefer the other three seasons. Although I do like to snowshoe and I do appreciate the raw beauty. Not a winter girl in general. Horses um, like us uh. don't like temperature real temperature extremes they really uh. struggle in extreme heat just like we do in the winter they're pretty hardy because they grow thick heavy winter coats and we blanket that when it's really when it's really cold outside we blanket um, and they of course all have access to very spacious shelter to get out of the elements so in general they don't mind the winter but you'll see, again, they're individuals, so you cannot generalize extremely. I would, I would say that they prefer moderate temperatures, you know, 40 to 75. Um, they manage in the heat. They'll go straight for the shade. They'll look for water. Um, and winter is just fine them unless it's extreme and of course the older they get the harder it becomes so they're just you know I definitely see some of them playing <laughs> they play in the snow though they I've seen some, some of them, of them that's really fun play in the snow especially when it's novel those first couple snows <laughs> of the winter for sure it's a good time all right Kathy we got just a couple minutes left and then we got to sign off for today. All right, and guys. Cricket's like, where's the grass? Come in. No, yeah, I got to stay out here. I got to stay out here, get all this grass. No one's been eating this grass. It's all for me. <laughs> Very rude, well, Cricket. Well, we're excited that everybody joined us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> excited to introduce this girl and tell her story. Um, Lauren, I'm sure you have a couple announcements to make. We will soon be sharing news about our new podcast, Heard Around the Barn. I'll be Looking forward to welcoming everybody every Wednesday. That will be happening soon. And I'm sure you've got other stuff you want to announce. You guys be well, be happy, get your vaccinations, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Okay. Are you, okay, Cricket's going to drag uh. Kathy off. All right. <laughs> Cricket, you be, Cricket oh. you be nice to her. Be nice to Kathy. I'll leave these. I'm going to actually take one of these. But I'll leave. <laughs> if you want to leave them for me, I'll, I'll get them. Okay. All right, off we go then. Okay, and there were just sheep right here with me a second ago, but now they're gone. I don't know where the sheep went. Let me flip this. There we are. Hi, folks. The sheep are gone. They left. If you heard someone bawling in the background, she doesn't want to go. Oh my goodness. She doesn't want to go. Ah, uh, all right. Yeah, Cricket is uh, an independent lady with a mind of her own for sure. Um, so folks, thank you so much for joining us today. We will be back here for more Virtual Sanctuary on Tuesday, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern time here on our Facebook page. And if you miss episodes or if you miss part of them, you can always find them on the, uh, the YouTube page. Just pop over there and check them out. Um, we've, been, we've done a lot by now. Um, so yeah, and other things coming up here at the sanctuary is uh, next week's cooking class. That is on Thursday the 15th, and it's a vegan 101 all about different types of protein uh, that Chef Linda is going to be making up. It looks really fantastic, so there will be a link in wherever the chat messages go. Um, so just look around for that in the chat you'll see that and you can sign up for that a virtual class and also with that remember you can also get recordings of any of the previous cooking classes also at the website so my friends it has been wonderful thank you so much for joining us we will uh we'll catch you here again on tuesday and hopefully we'll see you around the sanctuary soon bye bye everyone <laughs>